Welcome to Film and Page. I'm Dominic, and in this video, I'm going to be discussing The Expanse Season 6, starring Stephen Strait as Jim Holden, Dominique Tipper as Naomi Nagata, Wes Chatham as Amos Burton, Frankie Adams as Bobby Draper, Kara Gee as Kamina Drummer, Nadine Nicole as Clarissa Mao, and Keon Alexander as Marcos Ineros, and many more. Produced by Alcon Entertainment and Hive Mind. Based on the Expanse series of novels written by James S.A. Corey. So this was a season that I was looking forward to and not looking forward to because uh, I wanted to see the story continue with Marcos and Eros and how they were going to wrap that up. But at the same time, everyone knows this is the last season of The Expanse. They announced this was the last season and the show was getting cancelled. And apparently the reason is it's too expensive to produce and Amazon doesn't want to flip the bill for it. Um, which I really don't understand. Amazon has some pretty deep pockets, so I don't know why they wouldn't. Um, but, so I'm kind of left with mixed feelings about this last season, to be honest. Um, as compared to some of the other ones, because some of the other ones you always knew you were going to get the next installment of the story. Uh, so, where's this season picks off? So, spoiler alert. I'm going to be talking some spoilers now if you haven't watched it. This is not going to be a spoiler-free review. So it starts off, uh, Earth is in shambles. Uh, the Navy, Mars, coal, uh, the Earth and Mars fleets are kind of in shambles. Because Marcos is still lobbing stuff at the Earth. And he has all these uh, rocks rigged to uh, fly at the Earth. So in this way, they, they, they're always under the gun. They always got them distracted. They always keep, they, they got the, those forces pinned. So then the Free Naval can, can cause all kinds of trouble out around the belt. So they take over Ceres, one of the major stations there and stuff like that. So that's basically this whole season is they're trying to just finally pin down and stop the Free Navy. That's what the whole uh, ser uh, last season is about. And uh, some of the things that I liked about this season, um, again, some of the ship battles are really good. I like some of the ship design, especially the design of the Pella. I really like the design of that ship. It's uh, one of my favorite designs of the series. Uh, to be honest, is the Pella. I really like it. And uh, some pretty good ship battles. That's one thing I really like about this series. And it's just one thing that, just as a science fiction fan, I love to watch on screen is space battles between spaceships. It's uh, always one of my favorite things to watch. And then it had some pretty solid characters. Like again, Kamina Drummer was another really good character in this season. I really like, like her. She's like this old battle-hardened space pirate. Uh, I like that. And then uh, another character that I actually didn't mind, I actually really liked, was Philip Anaros. I thought he was a really good character. And you can really see he's very conflicted character a lot. This internal battle going on. He's kind of got, you know, he wants to be loyal to his dad, but then he's torn because he still longs for his mother. And so, you know, he goes through a lot of stuff in the six episodes. And I, I think he has a pretty good uh, character arc. And I think his character arc gets wrapped up pretty good. And then there's the character of Marcos Aneros. Uh, I really like uh, the actor who portrays this character. I think he does a really good job of uh, playing Marcos. And he comes off as this, like, con man. Like, he's, like, he kind of, he believes what he's doing is right, but at the same time, he kind of does, he kind of get the sense he's just, he's not really in it for the greater good of the belt. He's just in it for his own ego. And he's a narcissist, right to the bone. <laughs> and he's a manipulator. And he only cares about himself. He doesn't care about the belt overall. And his actions really reflect that. And he's just care and he, he just wants power for himself and he doesn't really care about anyone else. But he's such a slick talker that he has all a belt, belt swayed or large portions of the belt swayed to join his side and, you know, to take control of the solar system for the good of the belt. And he would lead it under the Free Navy. Uh, so he did a really fantastic job. Of, of doing that. And then some of my favorite moments from these last six episodes, uh, there were two that really stood out to me actually, and it's uh, the scene where Philip calls out his father's bullshit in front of the bridge crew. Uh, so there, I think it's, I can't remember exactly which episode it is, but uh, they they find, they, they come across the Rosinante, and so Marco and Neros can't help himself, they have to engage, because he still has this hang-up with Naomi, and he doesn't like it that Naomi's with Holden, and he can't control her anymore, because he's like the the that one of the, the controlling, crazy, narcissistic ex-boyfriend <laughs> kind of guy too, and he can't stand it that he can't control uh, Naomi anymore. So 
he veers off their overall plan and they try to convince him otherwise now this is not really a good idea to go after him right now we got bigger uh, concerns but no he, he can't help himself and he goes after him. and so they actually end up taking some pretty heavy damage after they fight the rosinante and they almost get destroyed like the rosinante could have destroyed the pella in this uh episode but because James Holden knew that Naomi's son was on board, he couldn't bring himself to destroy it, so he actually deactivates the torpedo that was launched by Bobby. And just lies about it, and they just think it was a dud. Uh, so, after, you know, they leave, and then Marcos is all pissed off, and he's blaming everyone but himself, because this was his idea, but he's saying how incompetent everyone is, and blah, 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 they couldn't destroy the, uh, the Rosinante. And then Philip just confronts him you know this isn't this is your fault this is no one else's fault you're the you know you're the egotistical asshole that you know can't help himself but go after his ex-girlfriend that he can't control anymore and you're the one that you, all this is your fault and then so anyway he they have this really confrontation and it gets really awkward on the bridge i just love that scene that was a good one because finally someone just calls him out for for what it is there was that and then the scene where bobby uh goes uh the Zerk on that uh, station that's at the center of the ring gates, the, uh, that, that like alien space station that's planted with rail guns. They're, they're trying to take control of the rail guns, but they've taken heavy damages. They're pinned down. They can't do anything about it. So Bobby just decides, okay, well, we've got to change plan of action here. And then she just goes full bore and they're blasting her armor and she's taking a lot of damage on her Martian armor. But she manages to destroy the... I guess it's like the kill switch that whatever she blows up there that deactivates all the rail guns. And she, uh, so they don't end up capturing, but they do end up deactivating, which to me seems, I don't know, a little bit sketchy. That scene, like you just, the blow up one, you think that it seems kind of stupid. They would have them all linked together. So if you, you're able to take out one, you can take out all of them. I think they would all have their independent power sources or something. So if one's down or one control hub gets destroyed, the other ones can still fire off. But anyway, they end up uh, deactivating the guns. And uh, so that was how they were controlling, uh, Marcos was controlling the ring gates. The network was these rail guns. And uh, so the other thing, good ship-to-ship -ship battles in this season. A lot of action in the season. They had to pack a lot in those six episodes. And uh, that's one thing that uh, I've always uh, looked forward to watching when I watch science fiction shows is those ship-to-ship -ship battles. Um... That's one of my favorite things. And The Expanse has a lot of that in it, which is why I like the show. And then uh, also the character of, uh, of Ursula. She is the actress that plays her, does a fantastic job. She's another one of my favorite characters in this series because she really fits the role and she comes off as really tough. And um, she really looks like she she just suits the part. Just She looks like a politician, but she looks like a real cutthroat one too. So they, another really good job. Like that's one thing about this show. I think the cast really works. I mean, you watch some shows that when they don't, the cast doesn't work or it's not cast right. It just, there's something about it. But here, I think they really did a good job and it all kind of fits together really good. Of course, Amos, again, another one of my uh, favorite characters. And then one thing that I really liked was all the Laconian stuff that you see a little bit of at the beginning of each episode. I like the, you know, I like, we got to see that, uh, the, sh the thing that where they build the ships, um, I forget what it's called. <laughs> the word escapes me. Uh, but where that uh, the ancient alien technology there that they've reactivated uh, with the proto molecule, uh, the shipyard. Yeah, that's what it's called. The shipyard, their alien shipyard, where they're building those advanced warships. And you actually get to see a glimpse of one of those advanced Laconian warships in at the end of episode three. You do get to see that. And another thing I, I liked, if you watched uh, the final episode, because I just watched it this morning, the final episode before making this, is when you see the names of all on, on the display screen of all the Marines they have that they launch down at uh, the space station, all the Marines' names, it's all the characters from Aliens. You see Ripley, Hudson, Hicks. Uh, that was pretty cool. They put all the names of all the characters from Aliens in there. That was a cool little Easter egg they put in there. Now I'm going to talk about some of the things that I didn't like. Um, I felt the season was way too short. Only six episodes for a final season. 
And I guess if it's true they got their budget slashed or they just got cancelled outright and they only had six episodes to do it, I think they did a pretty good job of ending it though with only six episodes, but I would have liked to see at least 10 or 13 episodes or at least the same length as the other seasons instead of just doing it in six episodes. But I think they did a good job of ending that story uh, thread with Marcos. To me that part was satisfying, but I just want more seasons because I, I I've read the books and I know there's more story to tell but one thing I am curious about is how people perceive if you haven't read the books and you don't know where the story goes and you've only watched the series I wonder is this final season satisfactory to you and if you have read the books and you know where the story goes is are you still satisfied with this final season or do you want to see the other books made into seasons as well me personally, I'd like to see the last three books made into uh, seasons because I'm up to book eight. I haven't read the final book yet. And this series of books, it's almost like a trilogy of trilogies. So the series, they've covered the first two trilogies in this uh, series for Amazon Prime. But there's still another trilogy to go. And they do set up a lot of stuff that, uh, you know, where you could carry it on later on. All that Laconian stuff is set up in this final season. You know, they introduce Duarte. You know, you get the glimpse of one of those advanced Laconian warships. You get to see the col colony starting off. And you get to see, you know, the uh, people being brought back from the dead. That's something that gets carried over into the final three books. You get to see that uh in this final season with that the, the girl's little brother that gets ran over and killed. She takes him out in those weird, almost like alien dog things. They can bring anything back to life. They can repair it with the proto molecule. So her brother comes back from the dead basically, and he's not quite the same. And so you see the parents freak out and stuff. So there's all this stuff set up, but you don't know where it's going to go. It's just, you know, it's left hanging. If you, so if you're, if you, if you don't read the books, you're probably wondering, well, what's the point of all this? Where's it going to go? And can't go anywhere now because they ended the series so there's a lot of stuff hanging so it's set up if they want to continue it they can easily continue it because there's lots of story threads still hanging there for some kind of a sequel series or another season now one thing though i have to say is is i want to here's where i'd like to see this series go or if they're going to continue or do any more with the expanse on tv this is what i like to see them do the last three books so if you have to if they want to take some years off to let the i guess um, people's hunger for more expanse build up over the next few years um i'd like to see them do the last three books it, it, either cover the last three books in either three seasons or at least two seasons i'd like to see that because there's a lot of cool stuff that happens in those books in that last trilogy so far in the last two that I've read anyway uh, so they could either do it as a series of streaming movies for Amazon Prime you know Amazon could up the budget we could get some like expanse movies that go straight straight to video maybe or I don't know I don't know how you could do it, but I'm sure there's a way they could do it one thing I don't want to see now this is one thing I absolutely would have no interest in watching is a spin-off series that has nothing to do with the books and it's all these new characters that just the TV writers came up with. Honestly, I have no interest in that. Any kind of a prequel or anything that takes place. Because in the books, when you have uh, book six ends off with they defeat Marcos. And then when we join them up again in book seven, there's a 30 year jump in time. There's a 30 year gap. I, I really don't have any interest in seeing any kind of a series that takes place in that 30 year gap. That's some kind of a spin-off that follows a different crew. Because I firmly believe the reason why this series is as popular as it is, is because of the books. The books are fantastic, so you have a really solid uh, foundation in that source material for a really good science fiction ser series. I think if they just go out on their own and they don't follow the books, whatever they do, eh, no one's going to like it. Uh, so if they're going to continue the series on television, do the last three books. And as for other things, well, obviously, you know, they have to do board games and they role paint the role playing game and stuff. And uh, now they have a video game coming out where I think you play as drummer as well. So there's other avenues they could go and do more comics and things like that and graphic novels as well. But uh, 
anything TV related, yeah, just do the last three books. Don't do anything else. Because why would you? I don't understand why you would do that when you have the last three books to pull from. Seeing how that worked out for Game of Thrones when they didn't have any more source material <laughs> didn't work out very good. So I, I, I would think it would be the same thing for this. But overall, I have to say, as a series overall, this has been probably one of the best science fiction shows I've watched in the, at least the last decade. This has been very good. Uh, as far, like, compared to other shows, like, it leaves Star Trek Discovery in the dust. Um, as far as writing goes, for it being entertaining, it, it, there's no comparison in, in my mind. Um, I know Discovery has its fans, but this show, I think, is way better. Way, way, way better. And way better than just about any other show that's on. It's better than any of the Star Wars stuff. It's better than The Foundation, I think. It's better than... Uh, Lost in Space, which Lost in Space was a show I thought was cancelled, but apparently it's back for another season. But, um, yeah, very solid series, and I really, really love this show, and kind of sucks now it's over, the ride's over, but I hope we get uh, some more in the future. So that's everything I got to say in this video. Let me know what you think in the comments section, and I will see you at the next one. I'd like to say thank you to all of my subscribers. I appreciate you all in helping this channel grow. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Also, don't forget to hit the bell icon so you'll be notified when new videos are uploaded.